Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Office Blog Daz. Office Blog Aiden. I'm Gaina. Okay, we've done a few of these uh, Lost in the Pond videos, right? Uh, we do yeah. like Lawrence. Yeah, we've done these on the uh, we do like Lawrence as well. We've done these on the Office Blogs as well. Yeah. Um, he's a he's a Brit from uh, the real posh part of Grimsby. <laughs> Is there a posh part of no, Grimsby? No. Jesus Christ. I'm sure there's some nice yeah. parts of Grimsby. I don't no, think there ain't, so. There, there is ain't, no nice parts in the North East. No, there's no, no, <laughs> 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 You're probably right. <laughs> Newcastle Town Centre's all right. Yeah. yeah. That's probably the best place. But uh, yeah, this is Lawrence. Five ways living in the US has altered my perception of it. Mm. I wonder if it's the same perception of what we had of living in the US. I live in a different area, I, though. We did, did live in a different area from where Lawrence is. Lawrence is in the Midwest, isn't he? Yeah. I think he's in, like he was in, in Indiana, then in Chicago. Chicago, yeah. sort of well, area. Yeah, he was in well, the either way. Yeah, the other way yeah. around. Yeah. But we were in the yeah we were in the Northeast, uh, New York, New Jersey, tri-state, and uh, also down in Houston, Texas. Yeah. But my perception of living in the USA, I never had the perception of living in the USA. I remember when we first were going to move there. Everyone was like, "Oh, what are you doing? It's everyone gets shot over there." Yeah, and, yeah that's I'm like, a lot I'm of people like, are like still like that. I'm like. So, and don't go, don't I? Went, the more you tell me not to do something, the more I'm going to do it, as you know. Yeah. So I'm like, I'm definitely going now. Yeah, your mum was petrified, wasn't she? she? Crying her eyes out yeah. me, for me to No, go. but like, there's still like a loads of people, even that I know, that, that think the USA is like a bad country and stuff. Yeah. And it, it would be a crap country to live in, and they just have no idea. <laughs> and where do they live? Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> Stockport. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> been there done it it's fine exactly Still alive. Like, when people always say to me are oh, you so lucky for doing that I'm not lucky go and do it yourself yeah, you're not a tree why would you move back here if you lived in the USA because I like back here as well I love it back here yeah. I love the UK I love everything about it I love the sport I love the pubs don't know, there's loads of stuff you can do here don't know, but it's I don't know your first two answers there yeah. <laughs> that's the only reason to move back yeah. <laughs> to be fair anyway it's great it, to be able to just hop over to Europe as well yeah, it's just lots over. Yeah. You can go to North Africa. Just a quick hop North over. Africa's close. You know, we spend time sometimes just off the coast of uh, West Africa. Yeah. You know, sort of the areas we go to, but there's loads of places you can go. Yeah. Great. Anyway, five ways of living in the US has altered my perception of it. Let's go. In fact, it's just occurred to me, this is something that I've heard a lot since moving here. Press one for English. Para Español o Prima El Dos. <laughs> Hello, this video is sponsored by The Great Courses Plus. I'm Lawrence Brown and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond. And one of those memos pertains to perceptions. It's no secret that both Britain and America have perceptions about one another. For instance, some Americans will ask me, Ooh, Lawrence, is it true that you all live in castles? <laughs> yes. But to be completely fair, before I moved to the United States, I had my own wild perceptions of what this country was. And today, since my channel has more than doubled in size in the last year. It's time to bring new subscribers, old subscribers, and yet to subscribers up to date. Here are five ways that my perception of the United States has changed since I moved here. Ah, American history, that wildly misunderstood beast. In Britain, you'll occasionally hear remarks like, ooh, America doesn't have history. In Britain, we've got churches older than dinosaurs and Keith Richards. No, no, they say, America is like the Macaulay Culkin of countries. But this line of thinking overlooks one very important fact. Macaulay Culkin is 40. But also, human history on this continent dates back to before Alfred the Great was even in nappies. Diapers. You see, growing up in Britain, I was only given a kind of narrow view of Native American history. But the truth is, millions of Native American people lived on the North American continent, thousands of years before Sir Walter Raleigh laid his eyes on Roanoke. And when you live here, evidence of this is all around you. Recently, I paid a visit to Cahokia Mounds right here in Illinois. And on these mounds, a thousand years ago, a city of 20,000 Mississippian natives lived. And while by today's standards, that number probably doesn't sound that big. At the time that was more than the population of London. Humans, not rats. And that's relatively recent. One story that really blew me away, pun intended, was that Native Americans were alive, living in the area, and likely witnessed the formation of Crater Lake in present-day Oregon. This occurred almost 8,000 years ago upon the collapse of Mount Mazama. Now, of course, when assumptions are made about America not having much history... Is that the deepest lake in America? Crater Lake? I think it is. Mm. Not sure. Yeah, I think it might be. A bird of it. History. People are really referring to the United States of America. But the thing that I've come to realise about this is that it has a lot of history packed into a short time frame. For context, let's go back in time. Not literally, I don't have a flying saucer. But switch on the time circuits to a quarter of a century after the signing of the Declaration of Independence. In 1800, the United States was home to just 5 million people. 
that's less than present day London. And the country has been busy in that time because today it stands at 330 million. In 1800, the United States was basically a country only east of the Mississippi River. That'll be important in a moment. In 1800, Chicago, the Windy City, the place that I currently live, didn't exist and wouldn't for 35 years. And even once it did, it was located in the country's Northwest Territory. And actually, this also explains the geographical classification of the Midwest. Whenever I heard that term before moving to America, I just assumed that's where John Wayne picked up his mail. And there have been dark times and hopeful times. The expansion west, the Emancipation Proclamation, World War One, World War Two, the Great Depression, Prohibition, women's suffrage, Tom Hanks being born, civil rights marches, the Civil Rights Act, landing on the moon, Watergate, Vietnam, Star Wars, both the film franchise and the missile defense system. You know, that was a very basic list from the top of my head. And it is one, admittedly, that you can pick up up anywhere in the world. But elements of that history, and we should say very intense history, is still felt today. I mean, it calls to mind my visit to the Lincoln Museum in Springfield just a few weeks ago. Couldn't have done that in England, not even online. But I think the point is, you know, you can learn all of this history in a book, but I think being in and around reminders of it, physical reminders of it, is probably the best method of learning that there is. Anyway, before my upper lip becomes any less stiff, let's move on to this. Listen, I've talked a lot about how bloody big America is, and it is. I mean, just look at the map behind me. It looks like a giant shark. There's the tail and there's the head. Never mind. But there are so many more things that I didn't know about America's geography until I moved here. Here are five of them. Weirdly enough, I did know that the Mason-Dixon line was basically the separation between the North and the South. But what I didn't know until I moved here was the role that the Mississippi River played, and plays, in the division between East and West. And this division somehow seems to come up in everything I research for this channel. For instance, hello everybody in the state of Georgia. How does it feel to be the largest state in the United States? that is east of the Mississippi River. Or, hello to the Wilshire Grand in Los Angeles. You are the tallest skyscraper that America ever saw west of the Mississippi. <laughs> and one thing that I've noticed having visited multiple places either side of the Mississippi is the large disparity between tree diversity. I mean, yes, don't get me wrong, California has some of the oldest trees in the entire world. But owing to its terrain, the western United States is way behind on trees. Whereas if you go out into the Appalachian Mountains of West Virginia, you can't see the mountains for the trees. That's not the saying. The third point <laughs> is a four-sided one. If you've watched this channel for a while, you'll know it's not lost on me. America is made of rectangles. Literally, in the case of this map, I'll never tire of the fact that the US flag, hundreds of US counties, most US streets, mm. several city parks, and Colorado and Wyoming are all rectangles. But living in their rectangular worlds are some decidedly non-rectangular people. And because there are 330 million Americans, I always assumed that the population density of each state was similar to that of the United Kingdom. But something that I've learned since living and crucially working here in the United States is that several states out west do have a larger area than the United Kingdom, but might boast a hundredth of its population. And these days, this is something I can talk about until the cows come home. And actually, in some of these states, this is quite likely because cows often outnumber people. Now, to be fair, states like Rhode Island fit... Th Get more cows than people in, the, in some states. Some states. Yeah. It's, it's very scarcely populated, aren't they? Um, populated like... Yeah, there's, there's not many areas here that you... Your Dakotas and things like that where it's... That you can, you can um, build new houses now. No, they're running out of... They're not, they're not running out of land, they're running out of... Because of the green belt and all that. Yeah. Got, they can build on brown land. Is that what you call it? Brown, brown, Brownfield, is it called? I don't know. I don't know what you call it, but I can't remember the name now. But um, but what you've got is, you know, I always say this about when people say to us, this common phrase that people use, that 100 years is a long time to Americans, whereas it's nothing for us, and 100 miles is nothing to Americans, but it's a long way for us. Yeah. But I think, you know, when people talk about driving to, say, London, we drove to Birmingham the other day. Um, and it's only 100 miles away, just south of Birmingham, went to Worcester. It's only 100 miles away, but it was 100 miles of a truck this far away from me on this side, a car this far away from me on this side, a car, two cars length in front of, front of me, a car two lengths behind me, and then so on and so on all the way down. Yeah. And it was pissing down with rain. Yeah. And you try to change lanes, you got, you know, it's, they, they try to change lanes sometimes, it's almost impossible. Yeah. Yeah. You have to indicate and hope someone lets you in, sort of thing, because it, it's that busy. Yeah. So I drove 100 miles in packed traffic at 60, 70 miles an hour, it's pissing down with rain. Yeah. 
there's no there's no open highways where it's no. you know, it's open and it's uh you you know you you can't see it. sometimes in the USA you wouldn't see a car for ages. No. It's yeah. not like that here when you're driving here. You're driving solid. You full could focus. drive at four in the morning from here to Birmingham and you'd see loads of cars. Oh, it'd still be busy. Yeah, yeah. it'd still be very busy. It's a it's busy too, route. Too many cars and not enough roads. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly what it is. Not enough land. And even when you're driving down the streets, the other side streets, you can't you can't go back streets because sometimes I when I go home from here, my sensors beat like mad on the, the road I have to go down yeah. because the cars are too close to me and they're parked up. Yeah, and I'm going down the middle of a road. I come to work over that bridge. That tiny little bridge. Yeah, the bridge is like well either side. I probably get about that much space away from my car either yeah. side. Yeah. 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 I won't come over that bridge because if yeah. I scratch my car, I'm, I'll be so angry. I won't go over it. Yeah, it's too small. I'm just too good at driving it. Eh? You've got a smaller car. <laughs> That's what it is. <laughs> your yeah. car wouldn't even fit, would it? No, I don't no, I've seen Range Rovers go through it before, though. Yeah, your car would be tight. Yeah, yeah. but it would. It might as well just I'd not do it. Wheels, I wouldn't bother. It's, not I'd not just drive it's too expensive. It's only a two minute extra yeah. drive. Yeah. yeah. But that's the difference I get with the distance. And I always think with the USA, there's so much of the USA to see. And when you're going from state to state, everyone still speaks the same language. Yeah. Why would you go overseas? Why would you travel? Yeah. There's no real need to. And when you go from state to state, it's different yeah. everywhere you yeah. go. Like yeah. we drove from New Jersey to Texas, but we kind of wound around. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. it's like they go, like if you live in anywhere in the USA, you can go on holiday to Florida, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. you've got the sun, you've got the ski, yeah. skiing in the winter, especially yeah. if you live up so, north. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. 350 more people per square mile than the United Kingdom. Despite being 175th its size, traveling around the United States has given me a new perspective on how state clustering works. East of the Mississippi, there are places where you can drive through a billion states in an hour. In the West, you might be in the same state for a billion hours. And depending on where you start, a reasonable drive from the East Coast to the West Coast can take you through as many as 14 states, but as few as seven. Similarly, driving from Mexico to Canada might take in 10 states or just three. Either way, it's food for thought. And at this time, I'm going to turn my thoughts to food. Wins every time. My perception of American food used to be that it was just hamburgers and pizza and sometimes both at the same time. (laughs) I was a student once. I was only vaguely aware that America had its own desserts like pecan pie or that Americans like to put one of about 58 million different sauces on things Mm -hmm. or that while American cheeseburgers are noted for their plastic-like cheese, states like Wisconsin produce genuinely excellent cheeses. So what would you say is the best cheese in the whole state of Wisconsin? Oh, we, uh, the best cheese in the state of Wisconsin is called Muscadet Mayhem. Okay. Actually, I have, to, I have to show you. That's the Case Meister. It's Muscadet Mayhem. Let's get one of those. Yeah, we'll get one of those. Absolutely. Too. And while I think it was pretty common knowledge that American portion sizes were bigger than their British counterparts, I had no idea back in the day that the United States was the land of the free refills. See what I did there? <laughs> Wordplay, which brings us on to this. The writer George Bernard Shaw once said that Britain and America are two nations divided by a common language. And he should know because he was Irish. But when I lived in Britain, it wasn't as clear to me just how deep this division was. In hindsight, it seems like there are certain well-known and popular differences, like chips instead of fries, colour with a U or without, and aluminium versus aluminum. But as a British person living in the United States day in, day out for 13 years, you discover ones you didn't even know exist. For example, as recently as a few months ago, I learned that Americans pronounce centrifugal as centrifugal, right? Because there are just some words like that that don't often present themselves in general conversation. <laughs> so if you if I might have been pronouncing something in the British way, and Americans would have thought I was a right numpty, and I would have had no way of knowing except by reading the comments section. But to address American English specifically, only by living here did I become aware of regional differences, right? How most of America says Mary, Mary, and Mary all the same, but some parts don't. Or how the country regionally differs on what they call a fizzy drink, soda, pop, coke, tonic, or how Midwesterners... How how are you gonna? What do you mean, Coke? What if? Yeah. Uh, what if it's Sprite? Yeah, they call it Coke. Really? Yeah. What? Yeah, I remember that. They'd say, "Do you want a Coke?" And it wasn't. Do you mean it's not Coke? It's fizzy yeah. drink. Yeah. I've never heard that. Yeah, I remember that. That's new to me. No, they used to say, "Do you want a Coke?" I was going to some other than a Coke. And then they say which one do you want, and you, then you'd go through your list. Well, I guess right? when you think about it, Coca Cola is the brand. Yeah, I guess it owns all the other. But it owns Sprite. Doesn't it? Doesn't matter. Doesn't own Pepsi. Yeah, but yeah. But it's can't call Pepsi Coke. Do you know what I mean? But I called it a soda. I still call it a soda now. Why? Yeah. If I go somewhere and say I have a soda. I remember that slipped out of my mouth like two years ago. So I asked was like, did you just say soda? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I did. <laughs> so I, better, I, I would say fizzy drink. And then you went, oh, well, it was good. Drink. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> what happened again? <laughs> 
No, I always say fizzy drink or soft drink. Yeah, fizzy drink. I say fizzy drink as well sometimes. Soda mm. or fizzy drink, I would say. I've no, I don't think I've, I've, I've never say soda apart from that one time. Soft drink to me is non fizzy. Soft drink. No, soft always. drinks are fizzy. I, no, I, fizzy. in my head, soft drinks non fizzy. Yeah. Like a water or a. a For me, soft drinks, cordial. water, juice, like. And juices, stuff like that. Fizzy drinks drink. as well. Yeah. But that's a soda, I'd say. Fizzy drink. Mm. Agree to on what they call a fizzy drink. Soda, pop, coke, tonic. Or how Midwesterners use the word ope and how the rest of America does not do that. And when I lived in Britain and I thought about the United States, it never really occurred to me that there was one other language in particular that's quite prevalent over here, Spanish. Whereas Britain often has, say, instruction manuals in English, French, Welsh. American manuals and public information will usually include a Spanish version of the text. In fact, it's just occurred to me, this is something that I've heard a lot since moving here. Press one for English. Para español o prima el dos. And of course, now that I'm here, all of this makes sense. You know, not only is the United States bordered with Mexico, but the country is home to more than 50 million Hispanic or Latino Americans. And funnily enough, to tie this back to food, because eventually everything comes back to food. Britain itself has begun to embrace Mexican and Tex-Mex establishments. Seems like all of the good things happened after I left. Anyway, amid <laughs> all of this talk of language, have you ever wondered how English took on a life of its own in America? Well now, thanks to The Great Courses Plus, you can learn all about it. it. I am thrilled to recommend a course that I've taken, my The Great Courses from Ionian, through interest your free trial. The link is in my description below. Additionally, The Great Courses Plus is always posting scintillating educational content on their social media platforms. Following them on Facebook, Twitter, a whole lot can't have a cutter. Links to those pages are also included below. In the meantime, you can't have a country without people. Americans. When we British people think of Americans, what do we think of? What do we picture? As a child of the 80s, I imagine that a large percentage of you were perfectly embodied by J.R. Ewing and Sue Ellen. <laughs> Mind you, I'm the same kid that thought the Golden Girls were set in New York City because the intro featured large buildings and also because different strokes were set there. But I've <laughs> since realised it's the most Florida thing that ever Florided. But in many ways, Florida itself provides Britain with a false view of Americans and, let's face it, Floridians. Because I think we think that something like, you know, one in two Americans is a Florida man. And that's silly. I think it's like anywhere else. When you sit down with most Americans in real life as opposed to Twitter, I th that's the same with like when people from America though think of people from England. London. They probably think every London. one in two people's from London. London yeah. I always think as well that there's certain Americans I spoke to when I lived there who thought. Don't get me wrong, most of the people from England are from London. Are they? Not really. That, yeah. It's the most popular. Greater London. Yeah, the Greater populated. London. It's the most populated city. Because it's, it's, it's grown into Greater London. It's massive now. Don't know, but when you look at... Um, you're not going to have more people from another city than London. Probably not. You probably don't in, in many places when yeah. you're in a capital city. Exactly. Don't know, but what I'm saying is... With, with the, nah, um, I don't know about New York. I mean, about uh, Washington, Washington DC. DC. No, that's probably diff That's an exception, I was going to yeah. say. That's in most places. Yeah. I didn't okay. say everywhere. Okay. But what I'm saying is you've got like... Um, um, with, with, when I used to meet people in the USA, they used to say to me, it kind of like they got a village feel as if London was like only like 250 people there. Mm. You know what I mean? It's not mm. busy and it's quiet on the roads and you can drive everywhere and you can walk everywhere with an yeah. umbrella and Mary Poppins sort of style. We all wear top hats and you know and uh, and suits and walk around. Don't know, and when people actually come and visit the UK School see, bags or briefcases. Yeah, and they see how busy it is and they go like, Wow, I never never thought it'd be like this. Yeah. It's like, you know, if you, you imagine Chicago in the, in, the, in the town centre of Chicago, you probably equivalent to Manchester. Yeah. It's probably not far different. If you're in London, every single road would probably have dead stop traffic on it. Yeah. Oh yeah, you don't move around London, it's a pain in the ass. It's like it's like Manhattan. Like the, yeah, it's like a big Manhattan. Manhattan. Hmm. It's like yeah. a spread out Manhattan. But even so, the tubes are like can't yeah. even move on the tubes. But they, they move though. The, the tube yeah. system works well, and that's a good thing about the UK is um, the, the, the public transport systems work very well. We've got the tram system here; and it's brilliant. Yeah. If you want, if you've got the time to do it, you know, I just think for me, it just takes too long. I'd rather drive. Yeah. Not to yeah. go to Manchester where we live. No, to go to Manchester where we live, it's quicker to get yeah. the tram. Yeah. No, it's not. It's, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. I've done both. Yeah, it depends what time of the day you go. If you go on a Saturday, if you go on a Saturday at three o'clock, I'll guarantee you I'll beat you. To, I'll beat you to uh, Saint Anne's Square quicker than you could get a taxi or drive. All day. Yeah. I don't know. It depends. Mm. Like if you get to the tram stop and it says next tram in ten minutes. Yeah, but I'll, I'll still beat you. No, you won't. Because I can get there in ten minutes. Not Saturday at three o'clock. You can't. Not Sound Square, no chance. Depends if the football's on or not. Yeah, good matter. Yeah.
think most Americans are good-hearted and polite and curious and have I just been hanging around with the wrong Americans? Maybe I should just go for a drink with Chainsaw Jim. Put it this way, you know who's approachable and who's not. You know who's your bag and who isn't. I mean that in a metaphorical sense, don't at me on Twitter. And yes, Uncle Toby, I hear you. Ooh, you have to like Americans because your wife's one. No, that was no, that was a theoretical conversation with Uncle Toby. <laughs> that is it for this video. Let me know in the comments below if you visited a country and whether your perception of it changed. Yeah, he's, he talks he talk sense, Lawrence, doesn't yeah, he? He does. He's got, the, he's got the right idea. He gives it in a balanced view. Yeah. And it's uh, it's one of them where you can't you can't argue with his facts what he's coming up with because the no. proper facts, yeah. the true facts. But there is a perception of like a lot of people in England that they just they don't even know any Americans, but they just have a perception they don't like American people. Yeah, yeah. And there's there's Americans as well that they have a perception they don't like British people. It's it's the way of it, the, the perception of the American in the UK of the loud, obnoxious, sort of like tourist sort of thing. When you go, is the same perception as Americans have and go, your food's bland. Yeah. And we go, your people are loud. And they go, not everyone. And I go, not our food's bland. Yeah. And they go, but but that's what I read and that's what I heard. And you go, well, that's what you read and heard. Yeah. Come over and try it and then yeah. tell me the food's bland. Yeah. And someone said to me ages ago, the English restaurants I'm in, I went, whoa, hang on a minute, English restaurants? I don't even know an English restaurant other than a pub. I can't think of one English restaurant. <laughs> it's a chippy, that's it. But no, I mean, proper like, someone says that we do English food. I'm like, what be, What would be English food? It's a restaurant. Yeah. You wouldn't go to an English restaurant unless yeah. it's a pub. Yeah. And that's, that doesn't classify as a restaurant as such. Yeah. You can go to a steakhouse. That's house. actually a, like, I've never really thought of that. I can't think of one English restaurant, <laughs> even in England. Yeah, I, I just can't. can't, can't I've either. gone up and down all the streets of all the main streets in Manchester and the, where we live. Yeah, and, and, and south where we live. The best restaurants or the most popular are always Italian, Italian or American or Indian or Indian. Yeah, Sri Lankan. Sri Lankan. You've got you've got every we've got every cuisine you can think yeah. of. I mean, even around the corner from us is an Iranian restaurant. Yeah. There's like God knows how many's on that strip of what yeah. we've got. You know, around the corner, but. I can't think of an English restaurant. No. I can't. So people saying to me, I, I had loads of English restaurants when I was there. Name one. Unless it was a greasy spoon that you had breakfast in. Yeah. And then our breakfast beat anyone's. Yeah. I'm not it's probably that. just a restaurant where they just expect it to be English if it's in England. Yeah, maybe. But it's probably And they've just got fish and chips. Yeah, but it'd be a pub, I'd yeah. say, if that's yeah. the case. Yeah. yeah. Which is very different. Yeah, yeah I agree. Anyway. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Let yeah. us know if you've been to England, you tried English food in English restaurants. <laughs> and how good was it? And we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.